Okay, so I've just entitled this series, Spanking Your Children. It'll probably be two sermons. I'll just see how long I take to go through this first part. This first part might be two sermons, so it might be two or three. But um, it's called Spanking Your Children. And the first sort of topic I want to cover in terms, in regards to spanking your children, is just some practical advice for corporal punishment. Because we, we start to have young families in this church and families that are going to have children soon. So I just thought it was timely as well to, to go over and give you some tips that I've implemented in my household. And hopefully this will help you um, implement some things in your household too. So I have a bit of an object lesson. I've got like, uh, you know, two uh, spanking utensils here. So if we need to make an example of any kid, you know, we can get it. We can have an example just, uh, you know, during the sermon. No, just kidding. <coughs> So um, I'll be talking about those, hopefully I get to those. So Ephesians 6, um, let's read here from verse 4, just a verse to springboard from. Uh, And and this is really why I decided to preach on this today, because it is Father's Day. And uh, unfortunately in our society, when we think of parenting, generally we think of an over-dominating mother that is running the show, dad doesn't know what's going on. Um, but we see here in God's word in Ephesians 6, it says here, and ye fathers. So there is an exhortation to fathers specifically, not just to parents. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So we always think of this verse of bringing up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But who it's actually directed to in Ephesians is fathers. So this is a charge given to fathers saying, hey, don't provoke your children to wrath. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And sometimes when I think of provoking not your children to wrath, yeah, I guess it it does obviously mean like don't make them angry. But it also makes me think about, you know, the children of wrath, the children of disobedience, almost like if you don't do your job as a father, they're going to grow up and be these children of wrath, these children of disobedience that are causing havoc in the world. And we need to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the, of the Lord. So, you know, fathers, we, have, we as fathers need to be involved uh, in the raising of our children. We can't just leave it to mum. You know, we have to be involved um, and, hel- and help, you know, because, you know, mums, just because they have a lot of children, that doesn't automatically make them super women, right? I mean, we can give birth to a lot of children. I mean, that's, that's easy, but they still need help to take care of their children. So you're still there to help your wife take care of the children. You know, you may need to change some diapers. You may need to uh, feed the kids. You may need to clean the kids. You may need to brush their teeth. Don't just leave that all for your wife because if you do, she's going to burn out. It's, it's hard taking care of kids. And if you're not there to help her and um, make it easy for her, um, it's going to just make it hard for her and, and put a strain on your relationship as well. So part of being a godly man and part of being a, Christ, a godly Christian man is being a godly Christian husband. You know, and being a godly Christian father. So, you know, we always talk about being manly and not being effeminate. This is part of being manly, is, is taking care of your children. So don't get this idea that being manly is I don't touch a diaper, I don't do these things. You know, yes, whilst I understand it's the woman's primary role, you need to step up and help and, and keep your household in check. So, you know, if, you're, if a Christian man is like this textbook Hollywood father where he has no idea how to do anything in the house. Um, he, his family doesn't fear him. His wife and children don't respect him. Uh, it's almost like you've been spiritually castrated in the eyes of God. You know, you're, you're like a spiritual eunuch. So you need to get some spiritual testosterone back into you. Um, start leading your family again. Uh, men that uh, are not as involved as they should be. You know, it's funny when you see, you know, programs like Malcolm in the Middle. My wife used to watch Malcolm in the Middle a lot. And, you know, this dad just has no idea what's going on. He's an idiot. You know, and that's, but that's why it's funny. It's funny because that's what dads shouldn't be, right? Because if he was serious and he was godly and he was, his family feared him and he knew what was going on and he had respect, it wouldn't be funny anymore, you know, because that's, that's the way it should be. Uh, so we joke about it when uh, it's not the way it should be. So fathers, we need to, to get involved. So first thing I just want to cover, and, and, and Kevin covered this as well, but I'll just remind us again. But corporate, corporal punishment is legal in Australia. So I, I actually printed out the law, so you can come and read it yourself afterwards if you want. But just a reminder that corporal punishment 
So spanking your children is legal in Australia. So don't let anyone tell you different that corporal punishment is not legal. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, and this is why it's so important that we have sermons like this where, where I'm going to explain to you, you know, why we spank, not just from the Bible, but explain to you why it's a good method, why it's effective. Um, but I'll probably go into that um, into the next sermon. Because, you know, maybe if we don't start to realize why we do the things we do, if we start shying away from the fact that we spank our kids, you know, and we're scared to let our co- like I'm not scared to let my colleagues know that I spank my kids. You know, that I bring my kids to, to work and they're like, oh, your kids are so well behaved. And it's like, well, because they get spanked, you know, they, they get disciplined. Um, so I just want to make, I just want to let them know, because then I want spanking children to still be commonplace. Like people still do it. You know, I, I still do it. Maybe a lot of people don't, but now you know somebody that does. Because you know, like sometimes people will think something's crazy because they're like, I don't know anyone that does that. You know, like home birth. Before you probably were part of this church, you're like, I don't know anyone that does home birth. If you, if you have your kid at home, you're like this crazy hippie or whatever. But then now you know people at home birth. It's not so crazy anymore. It's like, oh, well. I work with somebody that had a home birth. It's not so crazy. Or I work with somebody that spanks their children. It's not so crazy. But, you know, we don't voice our concerns. We don't know why we spank. We don't know why spanking is effective. We don't know the right way to spank. All these sorts of things. Maybe one day it will be illegal. You know, maybe one day they're going to overturn this law because people aren't standing up for the truth. They're too, too scared to um, spank uh, in, in, in light of these people that um, come down hard on it. So, you know, I don't think we should necessarily have this mentality that we can't change things. You know, we live in a democracy. We can change things. If we voice our concerns, if enough people are convinced, then this will remain legal in our country. Um, now, this is the Crimes Amendment Child Protection Physical Mistreatment Act 2001, number 89. And specifically, it's covered in here under Section 61AA. It's called the Defense of Lawful Correction. Now, this is an amendment to the Crimes Act 1900, uh, number four, because, you know, the Crimes Act goes into assault and things like that. So basically what this amendment was about was to limit what you could do um, to a child, you know, because obviously you can't just do whatever you want. So they're, they're limiting things. And the things that they have in here, you know, they make sense, obviously. They, so they're things that I would agree with. So I don't think it's necessarily wrong for them to be in here. So I'll just uh, read, uh, uh, here we go. So um, in criminal proceedings brought against a person arising out of the application of physical force to a child, it is a defense that the force was applied for the purpose of the punishment of the child, but only if the physical force was applied by the parent of the child or by a person acting for a parent of the child and the application of that physical force was reasonable having regard to the age, health, maturity, or other characteristics of the child, the nature of the alleged misbehavior, or other circumstances. So basically what that first bit is saying is, you know, it's not just anyone can hit children. You know, it's not like you see a child misbehaving, you just go grab him and spanking. Obviously it has to be a parent or somebody acting as a parent, and it gives the definitions in here. And then it's basically in the next one saying that it has to be reasonable. You know, you, ca you can't just like punch your kid in the face and, and get away with that. That's obviously assault. So it has to be reasonable and they take into account the age, health, maturity, other characteristics of the child. And they also take into account what the child actually did. You know, so, so the child just accidentally spilt their cup and then you just beat them up until they're all bruised and battered. Obviously that is assault. That's not what the law defines as lawful correction. Number two says the application of physical force unless that force could reasonably be considered trivial or negligible in all circumstances, it is not reasonable if the force is applied to any part of the head or neck of the child or to any other part of the body of the child in such a way as to be likely to cause harm to the child that lasts for more than a short period. Now, obviously any law, you know, it's, it's a bit of a gray area, right? What is reasonable force and all that sort of stuff? What is a short period of time? Um, you know, I guess that's up to a judge to decide. But basically what that second point is saying under section 61AA, and, and I'm not a lawyer, so don't take my word for it and then sue me later because, you know, I said, well, I took Victor's take on it. Now read it yourself. That's just my disclaimer there. So the how I take this to mean, the application of physical force. So it's basically saying if you apply force 
to your child, uh, you know, there is, there is negligible or trivial force. So obviously if you like slap them on the back of the head and just go like this. That's not the force they're talking about. That's like trivial or negligible. So it's saying if you do apply force to your child for the purpose of punishment, it can't be applied to any part of the head or the neck of the child, which is fair enough. Because I mean, you know, if you're going to spank your child with an instrument, you're not going to, you don't spank them on the neck. You know, you don't spank them on the head. So, you know, that's, that's fair enough. That probably is unreasonable. So I don't mind that being in there. Um, and it's saying that it should, it, it, um, it should be applied in such a way as to be likely to cause harm to the child that lasts for, or it shouldn't last for more than a short period. And obviously a short period is um, open to interpretation. So what you'll find in this law, it assumes, obviously, if there's a defense of lawful correction, I mean... Cap uh, corporal punishment cannot be illegal, right? If there's a law in our constitution, an amendment saying, hey, there, it is a defense saying if somebody's saying you're assaulting your child, if they are applying force for the purpose of correction, it's a defense against that. That's what it's saying. Um, and you'll notice there that it doesn't mention what you can and can't hit with. I guess that comes into play depending on what the judge rules, right? Because they're going to look at common law, they're going to look at case law, and then they'll decide whether or not it was reasonable or not to hit with an instrument. But the law itself does not uh, say that it's illegal to hit your children with an instrument. And I'll get into that later. I think it's a lot better to actually hit them with an instrument rather than with your hand. So you can't hit the head or the neck. I'll put a link into my sermon notes online so you can get a copy of that. I, I think it, it is actually useful um, and, and the reason is, I'll, I'll just tell you the story of when the police was actually called on my family from my neighbor and what actually happened there. And ever since that happened, my wife has just printed this out and just kept this on the fridge just in case she ever ha that happens again. That way, you know, when these officers come and try and tell you that it's illegal, you can say, no, it isn't. You've got the law wrong. Um, and it's perfectly legal. So what actually happened in my instance, you know, we had an encounter with the police, you know, um, obviously we spank our children, uh, you know, when they're, it's usually daily basis probably. Somebody's getting spanked every day. Um, some are getting spanked multiple times a day. Um, you don't, you know, it's not like you keep track of it. So our neighbours reported us to the police because they're actually, they're hearing all the screaming and everything like that. And if you remember in our last house, we lived in that duplex and the windows were really close to our neighbour. So they could even hear the singing. They, they were always complaining about us anyway, with church being there. So our neighbours reported us to the police after hearing uh, our children being spanked regularly. So, you know, it's, it was funny because when the police showed up, they, were, they showed up maybe one or two hours later. So I'd already forgotten about the spanking and everything like that. They showed up at the door and, you know, like police, because they, they you know, it's a, they, they're thinking that it's an abuse thing, right? So they come and they, you know, bang on your door really hard. So I answer the door and I'm like, oh, okay, is there, a, is there something happening in the neighborhood? Because I thought there's something happening in the neighborhood. They come to my house, I can, I can tell you what I know if there's anything happening. Um, but then they asked to actually come in and ask me some questions. And then that's when it sort of linked like, ah, oh, like I, I'm what's happening in the neighborhood. <laughs> so like they actually went and, and go, went and spoke to our neighbors to ask if they'd heard screaming and heard unusual behavior. But everyone's like, no, like, because obviously the rest of the neighbors can't hear anything. Because after, after the police left, um, the next day I went to actually go talk to my neighbors just saying, you know, do you hear anything? Do you have a problem with me spanking my kids? And, and all the other neighbors couldn't hear. So I knew it was the neighbor that was next to us because the rest of them didn't care. So, so I, I, I let them come in. Um, uh, th then they, they asked us if, if, uh, if we spanked our children. You know, that was like the first question they asked, you know, do you spank your children? And obviously, you know, when the police come, I'm not used to just dealing with the police every day. So I was a little bit nervous, but, um, but I remember I didn't hesitate at that time. They asked me if I spanked, because I already knew this. Like I already looked this up, my wife didn't know this. So I already knew that it was legal. So when they asked me if I spanked, I said, yeah, I do, you know, because I want to make your job easier. You know, I don't want to make your job harder. So I was nervous, but I said I do without hesitation. They asked, you know, then they asked questions like, you know, how often do you spank? Do you spank every day? And that's what I was saying. I was saying to them, you know, it's not like, it's not like this bell just goes off. You know, it's, it's not like just like periodically every hour, like a bell goes off. It's like, ding. All right, so it's time for your spanking. Do you know, you're like, what do they, what do they think? Like I keep track of these things. I'm like, I don't know. Every day, every other day, a couple of times a day. I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, so, so I was talking to them, and as I talked to these two police officers, they were both younger than me, um, which, is, which is irrelevant. But I asked them whether they had children. They didn't have any children. So, but I asked them, you know, when you were a, ch when you were a child, didn't you get spanked? 
Um, and there was, a, there was a male officer and a female officer. And the female officer was like, no, I, I didn't really get spanked when I was older. But the Asian officer, he goes, oh man, I was caned. Like, you know, like that's, that was his exact words. He's like, oh man, I, I was caned. So I said, so you probably carried on as well, you know, when you got spanked, you know? And, and, and he could see that. So, you know, and for them, you know, I feel for them because obviously, you know, they have to respond to these calls. So if they didn't, they could be charged with negligence. So they're coming and they're investigating. They're probably just so used to coming to houses where everything's in a mess that that's what they come to. They come expecting that, but they realize, you know, they come, everything's clean, everything's in order. Um, the children are happy. So, you know, because they arrived a few hours after the spanking had occurred, um, it's funny, they, they probably came expecting something else, but when they came, because a few hours had already passed, you know, the kids were playing, you know how my kids are when, they, when you come to my house, they're like talking to you, they're laughing, they're playing, they're really, really noisy. So I'm just thinking these police officers, like their brain must be hurting when they come to my house because they, they're coming expecting one thing and they're just thinking like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, they're meant to be like this abusive drunk family, but look how happy the kids are. They're talking to me and they're playing on their bikes and everything. So, um, I guess my point here in, in telling you this is, you know, like, don't, don't be scared. You know, like, don't be overprotective when you're talking to the police. You know, I'm not scared. I, I see it as an opportunity to um, educate them. And, and like I said, it's like letting your colleagues know that you're a Christian, that you go to church, that you spank your kids, that you homeschool, you have home birth, you go sewing. Like, they know these things. And then it won't be so... You know, they might still think it's weird, but it won't be as weird for them because they know people that do that. And it's the same with the cops. If, if the cops probably have that mentality because they're so used to going to houses that don't spank properly, that, you know, all the Christians, like, they're in hiding and everything like that, so they have this expectation. But now these police officers know that there are parents that do it right and there are children that are happy. So I, I wasn't able... Um, I then, so then I went to speak to my neighbours. So after that happened, I went to speak to the neighbours. I didn't, I wasn't able to convince them, but um, at least now they won't call the cops on me, right? So if I, if I just don't have that relationship with them, if I go talk to them, at least they know, hey, well, you've called the cop once, they didn't do anything, so don't bother trying again, kind of thing, you know, to sort of like make that point subtly. Um, so what happens after, after the police had left, right? Um, they then reported our case to another organization called Barnardos Australia. So Barnardos Australia is like a charity organization that deals with kids that are oppressed and all this sort of thing. So what actually happened is these officers from Barnardos Australia actually visited my wife. They visited my wife and these were the officers from this organization that were trying to tell my wife that it was illegal to spank. So then they called me at the office as well. They called me on the phone and then they had a conversation with me trying to tell me that it was illegal to spank. And, you know, I sit in, I don't have my own office or anything. I'm like sitting like in sort of cubicles with my colleagues. And I'm just on the phone saying, are you kidding me? Like, I know the law. You cannot tell me that it's legal to spank my kids. I've read it. I'm going to send you a copy of the law. Um, so I got off the phone and we sort of had a bit of a ruckus on the phone. And even my colleagues, when they were, they were listening to this conversation, and they're like, what, is, what, is, what just happened? They're saying, like, you're getting in trouble for spanking your kids? So it just goes to show that people have not totally lost their mind. You know, there, there are still people that, you know, believe spanking is right and things like that. So don't believe the media lies. You know, they're telling you that everyone's doing positive parenting. No, there's, there's probably just a fringe of, lun like, these fringe lunatics that are trying to push positive parenting. And most of the people that are doing it, you, you read, like, these parents that are trying to do positive parenting, and they either have just, like, one kid that they can just spend all day with, or the parents are just losing their minds because it's just not working, you know? And they're trying to do all this positive parenting stuff, and they're just going crazy um, trying to keep their kid in check. So, um, so then I ended up writing them an email and just sending them this and just saying like, hey, it's not illegal. And obviously they didn't agree with me, but I did get one of their managers to call me back. One of their managers called me back and just apologized and they, they understood that it's not illegal. So I'm just hoping that now, because you know, what about if they had gone to a house of, you know, like some immigrant or something like that, didn't know the law. And you know, they, they come, you know, in the name of the government telling everybody that it's illegal to spank. And now they're just scaring people into breaking the law when we're not actually breaking the law. 
So um, it's knowledge is power. So make sure you know, it's important that we know as much as we, we can, you know, not just about the Bible, but just about society as well, so that we are not just pushed around um, as ignorant Christians. So I wanted to just show you um, Because I actually, I actually got this on video. So I just wanted to show you the, the video. We're here to investigate a child abuse complaint. I didn't call the police. I did. She hit me with the belt. Is that true, ma'am? I found out from Danielle's teacher. He's been cutting class. And when I asked him about it, he lied. So I hit him. Come here, kid. How long ago did this happen? A few hours ago. How many times she hit you? Three. Left me right on the butt. She hit you anywhere else? No. She hit you with her fist or another object? No. Just the belt. Has this happened before? No. Right, I'm going to take that belt and put it into evidence. I've been acting out a little and I felt like I had to... Am I going to jail? You called the police on your mom because she disciplined you for ditching school. That's child abuse. I've got rights. Who told you that? My friends. Hit him again. You know what? You got some bad advice from your buddy from the playground, pal. You don't ever call the police on your mom. Had that been my mom, you'd be calling me from the floor. I gotta be back here again because you were ditching class. I'm gonna peel this big belt off and I'm gonna hit you myself. You got it? John, get inside. <laughs> you guys might have seen that video on Facebook. I know it was going around. Like it's uh, not child abuse. It's uh, it's discipline. But you know it's funny because if we if we know what we believe and spanking becomes more commonplace, maybe we'll get more police officers like this, where if they get called out on child abuse claim, they're like, "What are you calling me out like this for?" You know. Uh, so um, I think it's important that we try and be a salt and a light in this world. And you know, that's what it means to be salt and light. You know, we, we, we wanna let our, our, let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. This is what it means. You know, it's not just the soul winning, but it's also the good works that you do. And spanking your children is a good work. You don't want to put that light under a bushel. You want people to know that's what you do. So the light shines brighter in this society. Now let's go to Proverbs 22.15 because let's just talk about some false presuppositions when we talk about the topic of spanking. Some false assumptions, preconceived ideas that are wrong. That's what I mean by false presuppositions. So Proverbs 22.15 says here, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And this is really one of the points that the whole positive parenting and no spanking movement is trying to push, that children are inherently good and they inherently know what is right to do and they'll be guided by that behavior and we just have to nurture them in that nature. As opposed to what the Bible teaches, that we are all born sinners. We all have a sinful nature and we sin automatically. Foolishness is bound in the heart of the child and we have to discipline in order to get rid of that foolishness. So children, number one, they're not, they're not mini adults. You know, children are children and they need to be guided and molded into uh, godly adults. Uh, children are born foolish. They are not born intelligent. They are born foolish and they need to, to be guided. They need to be br brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Um, they don't need to be, uh, it's not their sinfulness, right, that needs to be nurtured. We need to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, not in their own uh, sinfulness. Now, the other thing that the, the people say is, so that's one false presupposition, is that we are just naturally good. No, we're not naturally good. We're naturally foolish and we need to be corrected with the rod of discipline to drive it far from us. But number two that I've got here under false presuppositions is correction or abuse. And just sort of tying into that video, 
um, that I just showed you. You know, generally that video is shown with the meme saying it's discipline, not abuse. And just making this distinction between discipline and, ab and abuse. So correction is not abuse because the intention of correction uh, is to correct, the, the intention of um, corporal punishment or spanking is correcting behavior. It's not to injure somebody. So when you're abusing somebody, you have no good reason to do it. Your, 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 in, your intention is just to hurt them. And that's, the, that's the, the end, not the mean. Whereas correction is you are applying a reasonable amount of force in order to correct behavior. Because people will say this, you know, spanking is violence, right? They'll say, you know, spanking is assault, you know, it's abuse, and therefore it's violence. Well, I don't believe spanking is violent, obviously. Um, number one is because we have authority from God to spank our children, right? God gives us the authority to spank our children. So it's not anything wrong if God gives us the authority to do it. But number two, you're not spanking well-behaved children. Do you know what I mean? It's not like your children are just well behaved and quiet and, and, and doing it obedient and used to spank them anyway. You know, so you're spanking children that are obviously disobedient or being naughty or misbehaving. Um, for example, like in some families that don't spank or don't have that, uh, don't, that don't spank, they might have a form of punishment where they will fine their children. Right? So you might give your kids pocket money or maybe they work to earn their money. But if they're in trouble, maybe you'll find them and say, you know, you find $20. I'm not going to give you your $20 pocket money because you've done such and such. Now, the people that are trying to push that spanking is violent, they wouldn't say that finding your children is violence. You know, they would say, well, that's just a milder form of the government punishment. They're not, you're, not, you're not being violent against your child because you're stealing their property because they don't, they don't condone stealing, but they don't, see as a, they don't see a parent issuing a fine to the children because you've broken a household rule as stealing. They see that as a, a lawful way of uh, carrying out a punishment. Or, you know, we would say that jailing somebody is violent. You know, putting somebody and locking them in a room uh, for, for however many years for something they've done, we would say that is not biblical. That is, that is violent in our vocabulary. But the world would not say it's violent. They'd say, well, that's the right way you deal with the punishment. So they don't see timeouts as violent, which is just a milder form of the judicial punishment. Like if, you, if your child's being naughty, they lock them in a room or they make them sit in the corner. I was talking with a guy from work and what he does is he gets his kids to like hold a cup against the, against the wall with their head. And if the cup falls, then they need to start over again. They got all these different methods, right? I'm not going into that today, but... Um, but we would not see that as violent, right? So they see spanking as violent, but spanking is just a milder form of what the government should be doing, you know, because the government should have beatings, it should have stripes for criminals. Um, spanking is a milder form of punishment for that. We've just lost that argument in a sense because the government no longer does that. The government no longer beats people. Instead, we need to pay for them to be clothed and fed and all that sort of stuff in jails. Um, so no, spanking is not violence because it's just a milder form of the judicial punishment. You're, you're spanking misbehaved kids. You're not spanking well-behaved kids. The intention is to correct behavior, not to uh, injure or vent frustration on a child. Um, you know, it's funny, I shared recently on our Facebook page, if you didn't see, just this, uh, there was this lesbian pastor, right, and a transgender gynecologist pushing for four-year-olds to change their gender. Four-year-olds, I mean, what four-year-old, I mean, a four-year-old is, is the gender that you tell them they are. They don't know any different. I mean, I mean at least a four-year-old, like my kids, they're smart enough to know that a, you know, that a boy has a pee-pee and a girl has a, you know, a woman's pee-pee, right? <laughs> so, you know, they know the difference between a, an, between a boy and a girl. So obviously these four-year-olds, if they're just told every day, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl because you like to play with dolls, obviously they're gonna start thinking they're a girl because that's what their parents are telling them, whatever traumatic experience they're having. And then you've got these reprobate sodomites like this pastor and um, this gynecologist pu pushing this agenda. And you know the thing is, you know, they don't see that as child abuse. So they see correcting your child lovingly with a rod as child abuse, but they don't see convincing a child that they're a gender that they're not and making them go through irreversible biological procedures. They don't see that as child abuse. This is what the world has come to. This is crazy. Um, 
So, you know, we really need to uh, voice our opinions because the more normal that becomes, um, the less ground uh, we're going to gain uh, when we are trying to um, fight this spiritual battle. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and we'll start going into just some practical tips um, that I can share with you. So um, those are the two false presuppositions that, that spanking is not violence. Correction is not the same as abuse. And I do, we do distinguish between the two. You know, um, Sometimes spankings can go over to abuse if you're not doing it the right way. Um, and the false presupposition that children are just naturally good as opposed to naturally sinful and they need to be uh, spanked in order for that foolishness to be driven far from them. So let's read Hebrews 12, starting from verse 5, and we'll read to verse 11. Because some people might say, well, you know, all the scriptures that refer to spanking and correction and the rod and beating are all in the Old Testament. But Hebrews 12 really takes away that argument and shows that, you know, us as children of God, God still uses that analogy of chastening and scourging uh, in the New Testament and uses that as an example for us to follow. Uh, it says here in verse 5, And ye have forgotten the ex exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So I've just sort of broken this passage into four things I want to point out. Uh, so verse 5. So verse 5 says here, <coughs> um, is it verse 5? Verse 6, sorry. Um, it says here, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So the first point I just want to make is, you know, correction is always done in the spirit of love. It's not done in the spirit of anger. Now, I'm not up here preaching to you as a perfect man. Obviously, I've spanked my children the wrong way um, sometimes. You know, you spank them sometimes in anger because we're in the flesh. And, you know, that's why we have to really be careful. But um, doing spanking the right way, we need to spank them in the spirit of love and not in the spirit of anger. Why? Because in Proverbs uh, 22, 8, I'll show you this verse. It says here, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. See, if you spank in the wrong spirit, if you spank in the spirit of anger as opposed to in the spirit of love, your spanking is not going to be as effective as when you do it in a loving, uh, in a loving way. So that's my first point. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Spanking should be done in the spirit of love, not anger. Um, it says here in Proverbs 22, the rod of his anger shall fail. Spanking shouldn't be a reaction to your anger. It's a punishment for a certain behavior. So you're not spanking your kids because your kids are driving you to the point where you're like, I can't take this anymore, I'm going to give you a spanking. That's not how you should be thinking of spanking. It's not, it's not a reaction to how their behavior makes you feel. It's meant to be they are doing something where you've already said this is wrong and you are correcting that behavior. That's why you are spanking them. Um, and it's very important because, see, if your children don't know that you love them, your spankings will have no effect. You know, that's why parents, if they're just, just judgment, you know, if all you are are spankings and you're no hugs and you're no kisses, your spankings are going to fail. The rod of his anger shall fail. Because children, they need to know that they're loved. Otherwise, they're just going to get bitter. They're just going to think, my parents just hate me. They're just spanking me all the time. They don't love me. And they think, you know, my parents just don't love me. Whereas if they know they love you, they then know they're not being abused, right? They know that they're being corrected and they know that mom and dad is there to teach them the right thing. So you can't just be all judgment. You need to also be love and kindness. Um, have high standards. Have high behavioral standards. 
for your children. Right? A lot of people, they get angry because they don't have high standards. They set the bar too low. They let their kids push them too far. And then when they spank them, they're too angry. If you have a higher standard that you hold your children to and you say, well, instead of you getting to this point and then I spank you, I'm going to spank you at this point, then you're not going to get so angry because the things that they're doing are a lot milder and then you'll keep them from getting really, really um, badly behaved. So spank sooner and you'll spank less. You know, if you spank sooner, you'll spank less. So basically, it's like if I set a standard for my children and I say, you know, don't touch whatever. And then they go touch it. As soon as they touch, if they touch that and I've told them not to, I'll just give, I'll give them three pretty hard spanks just to say, you know, well, I've t told you not to do it. You did it, so you got spanked. As opposed to somebody that might be saying, don't touch it, don't touch it. They tell them 10 times, I told you for the 10th time not to touch it. And then you go spank them. And now you're angry. Now you're frustrated. Maybe you spank them 10 times instead of just spanking them less earlier uh, when you're calm and under control. So if you spank sooner, you'll spank less. Ask once. So this is what I ask, ask once. Spank three times for disobedience as opposed to spanking 10 times and then spanking them 10 times. Asking 10 times and spanking 10 times. Um, and think about this, right? If you expect your children to obey you after the 10th time, because obviously everyone's got their limit, right? Whether it's one or three or five or 10, you'll ask your children a certain amount of times and then you expect them to obey. And that's why generally you'll ask them and if they don't obey, then you'll spank them. So if you expect them to obey you after the third time, after the fifth time, after the 10th time, why not after the first time? You know, you just, just set that standard and just say, if I've asked you once, you've understood what I've asked you to, to do. If you don't do it, you've already disobeyed. That's the standard. Rather than asking them, they don't do it. Ask them again, they don't do it. Ask them again, they don't. Now I spank them. Because now they're going to know, now that you've, tra now you've trained them, you've brought them up to be conditioned that I can ignore dad twice before I actually have to do it. Whereas if I hold the standard, I ask you once, if you don't do it, you get a spanking. Next time I ask them, they know, oh, if dad asked me to do something, I better do it straight away. Now, obviously, kids are not perfect, so there's obviously some grace that needs to be built in there, and this is where parenting takes wisdom. But I'm saying, if you have high standards, you will get less frustrated, you will spank your kids earlier rather than later. It also means you're less angry when you actually go to discipline them. And one thing you can do is you can warn them beforehand so that they, when you do spank them, they're not shocked. Like if there's something I don't want them to touch, like maybe I'll just gather them all around and say, all right, guys, this is not a toy. You don't touch this. So when they do go and touch this or go play with it, I can already tell them, didn't daddy say not to touch this? And they're like, you know, when they're older, like Simon and Timothy's age, they understand. So you say, you know, why are you in trouble? They'll say, well, because I, I shouldn't have touched it. I'm being naughty. So when they get a spanking, they know I'm not just spanking them because I just enjoy it. I just get a kick out of it. You know, I'm just spanking them for no reason. They know why they're getting spanked. And I've told them before, now they've done it. They're not shocked that they're getting a spanking. Obviously, that doesn't mean they just, you know, they don't just stand there and just love taking it. But um, they know that they're wrong, you know. So how many spanks do we give? Uh, that might be a question. So everyone has a different, you know, if you ask Kev, He'll have a different, different uh, opinion for you as well and a different standard that he puts in his house. The numbers that I really use, I don't even know why. It just, um, uh, just seemed right when I was hitting them. <laughs> How many times to hit them? So um, mine is like, you know, if, I, if they disobey, if they've done something wrong, my base amount is three. I don't know why. You know, maybe it just rolls off the hand. Three. One, I feel like I haven't spanked them enough. Two, it's like halfway there. Three, I feel like it's, it's complete, like the trinity. So, um, so three spankings for something mild. If I feel it's more major, then it's five spankings. If it's something really bad, like I've told them many times and they've done it, it's something serious. Maybe they've broken something and it was because they were naughty. It wasn't an accident. They played with something they shouldn't have, something dangerous. Then I would give them 10. That's 10 is probably the maximum I would go. Um, I have done more than that when it's been really serious. And some other points are, you know, I give them one extra if they move. Like, Obviously, with older kids, you can do this. With younger kids, you can't really because, you know, when they're getting spanked, they kind of lose control, so you can't expect them to compose themselves. But somebody who's the age of Simon, Simon, you can actually say to him, hey, I'm going to give you three spankings, and if you scream and carry on and you jump around, you're going to get more. He will actually, he'll take it because he knows 
if he doesn't, more are coming. So I'll just give him another extra. Like if he like, you know, jumps around, he's like, ah, oh, on the floor carrying around. I'll just say that one didn't count, you know, because you need to stand up and you need to take these. So um, it'll just keep going if they just keep carrying on. And obviously that's at an older age, uh, not at a younger age. And the spankings can be compounded. So if let's say they've broken something and then they lie about it, that might be like, well, three for actually doing the sin and five because you lied about it. So you're going to get eight spankings for that. So that also encourages them to tell the truth, you know, not lie about things. And that was a good one. I actually got that one from, from Kevin. Um, so those are the numbers I use. You see what works for your family. It requires a bit of wisdom. But you, you generally have like this sort of mild, you know, good, better, best, you know, like they have in uh, product catalogs at work. They always have a good, better, best. So it's like three, five, ten. So like you want the best kid, they're going to get ten spankings. Um, all right, let's go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13, verse 24. says here, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. So we've all heard the saying, spare the rod, spoil the child. Well, that's not actually biblical. The Bible says if you spare your rod, you hate your child. So if you love your child, you're going to spank them. And if you withhold the rod from your child, the Bible is accusing you or is not accusing you, telling the truth, that you actually hate your child if you are not willing to spank them. And most of us would not claim that. We don't think that we hate our children because we don't spank them. But the Bible is saying here, if you don't spank them, you are hating them. So we need to love our children. We, we can't spare the rod. We need to spank them because that's what they need. So you're not just going to spoil the child. You will spoil them, but you're not just going to spoil them. You hate them as well if you don't spank them. Um, now let's go on to Hebrews. I'll come back to this passage at another point, but let's go back to Hebrews. <coughs> Just on that topic of hating your children, look at what the Bible says here in Hebrews 12, verse 7 that we read. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Because remember it says, the, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So he disciplines his children. So he says, if you endure chastening, so if you get a spanking from God, God dealeth with you as with sons. Because this is how God loves his sons. This is how God deals with his children. It's, it's, it's the normal thing to do, because if you love your children, you're going to chasten them. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? And we know the question to that for in the next verse. Then are ye bastards and not sons? So you see here, God is saying, I'm not going to treat my children as bastards. I'm going to treat them as sons that I love, and this is why I chasten them. So my question to fathers that refuse to spank is, is that how you're going to treat your children? Do you hate them? Do you think of them as bastards? Uh, as opposed to thinking them, of them as your actual children. So we need to, to spank our children. Um, and we need to do it in the spirit of love, and we need to do it the right way. So there's a couple of tips there. Um, to help you with that. So let's go back to Hebrews. Oh, we're here already. Sorry, just go back up. <coughs> now it says here, um, uh, let's see where I. Oh, here we go. Okay, sorry, I just missed that point. Hebrews 6. So now. Uh, Hebrews 12, verse 6, it says here, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So the Bible says here, he scourges every son. Now, why does God spank every son? Because every son needs spanking, right? Because God's not going to do something that's not required. So the reason why he's scourging every son it's because every son requires spanking. And I would submit to you that all children need to be spanked. Remember, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Every child requires a spanking. Um, you know, you're, but you'll have people say, oh, you know, but my child, my child just didn't need to be spanked. Have you ever heard parents say that? My child just didn't need to be spanked. See, the child did need to be spanked. You just didn't love them enough to do it. Um, or you handled the sin the wrong way. So we'll go into alternatives next week, but you know, or they handled that situation the wrong way. For example, they distracted the child. So the child did something naughty 
and instead of spanking them, they put an iPad in front of them or they gave them something else that they wanted. They gave them an ice cream just to shut them up and just to keep them happy. Now, that, that's probably why you never had to spank your kids because you just spoiled them and you hated them. Um, but what sort of person is that, is that kid growing up to be? And, and, you know, and, and you guys know as well as I do, when you come across kids that are not spanked, even if the parent is like, well, they didn't need to be spanked, the, ch the child is never as pleasant as a child that is spanked. Because at the end of the day, they believe that a child has to figure it out themselves and things like that. So um, it's very rare. And, uh, you know, and, and all these parents that don't spank, I would really like to meet their kids because it's one thing hearing their stories on a blog post about how perfect their alternatives are and how perfect their lack of spanking has raised that child. But I'd like to see their children interacting with my children, interacting with other children and really see, you know, the proof in, in their pudding. But, you know, they'll say things like, oh, my child just didn't need a spanking. Every child needs discipline, needs a spanking. Um, you just would have just handled it a different way and caused yourself some other problems uh, and made it harder for yourself. You know, just made your job harder than it needed to be. You know, you may have a different method. You know, you might, you know, like, uh, like Simon might go and try and build a house with like, you know, toys instead of real tools. Can you get a house built probably with toys you buy from Toys R Us? Probably, but it's just making your, just making your life harder. You know, God has given us the tools and the instruments and the direction to make it easy for us. And if we choose to not obey it, we're just making life harder than it needs to be. And this is why people that don't spank their children, I, I, do, you guys, do you guys know of an example of a family that has lots of children that doesn't spank? I, I mean, I, I, like, I like to see one. I've, I've never sort of, you never read about these blogs from moms that just like, you know, have, have, have like 10, 11 children that don't spank. Because I tell you what, if they didn't spank, they, they would have gone insane, right? Because you already go borderline insane just trying to keep your kids in check when you do spank. So just imagine if you didn't spank them. It, it would be borderline impossible to keep that family in order. And it just makes me think of my colleague because it's funny because, you know, they talk about how effective their, you know, their sternness is. He talks about how effective his, his keeping the children, keeping the cup against the wall, remember that? Like, and, and, you know, we're talking about it over lunch, saying, oh, you know, this is why he dies really hard on them. If they drop the cup, they do it again. They know when dad gets home, like, you know, everything's in order, everything's fine. But the guy's getting a vasectomy, right? Because he's got three children and it's just too much for him now. So he's, he's, getting, he's getting the snip so that he doesn't have any more children. Well, my, my, my question is sort of, well, if, children are, if your children are so well behaved and your, um, co your correctional method is so effective, why are your children just driving you through the roof? You know, my children, you know, yeah, sometimes it gets hard just keeping them in check, but they're, they're well behaved enough to be pleasant. Like they're a blessing. You know, they have fun and they, they, the way they play with each other, the way they play with us, they're a blessing to have around, even though they misbehave every now and then. But if my children didn't get spanked and they were just allowed free reign and they were like some of the kids that I've seen, I can see why somebody would no longer want kids because it's just too difficult. Um, so if people see a brat getting spanked, they're fine with it, aren't they? You know, you see a kid tantruming and they're, they're, they're mouthing off at their parents, you know, they're like, ah, you, know, you probably get the thought, man, that kid needs a spanking, right? You're thinking, so people are fine with that, aren't they? When people see this bratty kid getting spanked, they probably think, man, that kid needs a spanking. And if he gets a spanking, it's like, good, good. he got what he, got what he deserved. But what I want to just say to you today is, but if you see a good kid getting spanked, people tend to be more lenient, don't they? So you think of, say, like my kids or Kevin's kids, and you're like, you know, the kid gets spanked, and, you're, and you, you're, your natural reaction is, man, they're not that bad, you're being harsh, you're, you're, you're overreacting. But what people don't understand is, is the reason why our kids behave the way they do is because we spank them. Do you know? Like, so it's not that they're just magically well behaved, it's because we hold them to a high standard, we carry out the disciplines that we say that we're going to carry out, and therefore they fear and respect us more than somebody who doesn't do that. So you don't want to have this mentality, oh man, your kids are just so well behaved, they probably don't need a spanking. No, 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 they're well behaved because they get a spanking. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, that's why, but people, you know, when they see a bratty kid that doesn't get a spanking, 
That's the parent that followed their advice and didn't spank. And that's why the kids like that. But the parents that are following are not following the advice and spanking their kids, you tell them that you spank your kids and they're like, oh, you're being harsh, you're overreacting, they're so well behaved, they're so pleasant. Well, it's because they got spanked. That's why they're pleasant to be around and they're polite because, you know, I don't allow them to have the, the wrong attitude and things like that um, at home. So we're trying to drive that foolishness from them. So, um, you know, but, you know, nowadays it's so turned on its head like, that even the, the brat that's throwing a tantrum and everything, people don't even think that that kid needs a spanking these days. They just think he needs a cuddle. No, he needs discipline, not just a cuddle. So the Bible says here, he scourges every son whom he receives because every child needs a spanking. And it's a scourging. So a scourging is a physical punishment. It's not just you know, removing a privilege and all these other things that they get you to do. It's a scourging. So, you know, when people say, I'm going to give your butt a whooping, that's biblical, right? Because you ought to be whooping the butt and it ought to be a whip, right? Like a whooping because it's a scourging. That's the modern day colloquialism. So give you a butt whooping, that's biblical. Um, and we'll look at alternatives in the next sermon. I know I keep alluding to these alternatives. Um, I'll go into that. I think it's just a sermon in and of itself because I want to cover the alternatives. I want to go into like the alternatives that the world gets you to do. And I want to just explain why spanking is more effective and just give you some arguments there. Why spanking over these alternatives? <clears throat> now, go, let's go back to Proverbs 13, 20, uh, Proverbs 13, 24. So it says here, He that spareth his rod hateth his son but he that loveth, loveth him, chasteneth him be times. Now, how many times when you, you read about spanking on the internet and whatnot, people have this mentality that using an instrument, like using one, like one of these, is more barbaric than using your hand. Now, there's a reason why the Bible says, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth, loveth him, chasteneth him, be times. Be times means early. Um, because it's actually more humane to spank a child with a rod than it is to spank them with your hand. So I would definitely encourage you, you use an instrument and not your hand. Because using your hand does a lot more damage and it does less stinging pain. And, and oftentimes, if you hit your child hard enough to actually make it hurt for them, it actually hurts for your hand as well. Like your hand probably hurts more than their butt hurt. But this is what you don't realize. So your, your hand, it, it's like a soft, blunt instrument, right? So when you spank a child with your hand, you're going to do more damage because it requires more force to give them a stinging. And the more force you apply with the hand, you're probably going to do more damage to the muscle and to the bone than just using an instrument. So this is one thing I just, I tell people that when I, when I, I ask them, you know, when they say they spank and they're not really getting results, I ask them, well, you spank, what do you spank with? And they're like, well, I just spank with my hand. Well, obviously that's not going to work. And especially if you're spanking with your hand out, out on their clothes, they don't even feel that. Like that, that you can't even feel that. You know, you, you would have to hit a child really hard for it to hurt. And if you did, you're probably going to break a bone um, if you hit them hard enough through the clothes. But if you hit them on bare skin with an instrument, you don't have to hit very hard. And that sting will hurt a lot uh, and it'll get the desired result. So use an instrument, not your hand. Um, let's go to Proverbs 23, verse 12. It says here, Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. So very clear in the Bible that God is not commanding us to beat our children with our fists, you know, to smite them with the fist. He's commanding us to beat them with a rod because that is the humane way to do it. You know, that, that's why we need to spank with instruments because that's what makes it lawful correction. You know, it makes it reasonable because you don't have to hit them very hard in order to cause a lot of stinging pain that won't uh, actually injure them. 
And, you know, I like what, and I like what Stephen Anderson says about this. You know, people will say like, oh, you know, it's not beating them. It's not a rod that, uh, like a spanking instrument. It's just like this shepherd's rod where you're just guiding them. And he says, you know, I don't care if you put a, a hook on the top of the rod, as long as you're beating them. It's funny, this, this one's got a hook. You know, like, so even the one that we use, I mean, you can guide them and pull them away, but you can still spank them with it. So, you know, the, the perfect spanking utensil, uh, funnily enough, has a, has, has a hook on it. Uh, <laughs> So it's the reason why you want to use a, an instrument and not your hand is because you want to inflict a surface stinging pain, you know, not blunt force trauma. So this is why we spank them with an instrument instead of spanking them with your hand. And this is also why, why you spank on the skin. So I think it's, it's very important if you're going to spank your children that you do take the time to pull their pants down and spank them on the butt. Um, the butt obviously is the best place to spank them. You know, I'm not saying it's wrong necessarily to spank them on the hand. We spank sometimes spank on the hand, spank on the arm, spank on the leg. Um, but you can spank them a lot harder and do less damage on the butt. And you know, even if they're wearing, like, you know, our kids wear cloth diapers at home, they wear disposables when they're out. Even if a child is in diapers, I mean, obviously if they're not wearing diapers, it's easy, just pull their pants down and the butt's there. But even if they're wearing diapers, I find even with disposables, it's easy enough to pull the disposable down, just like undies, spank them, and then pull the disposable back up. So that's generally what I do. I will lean them over my leg, or um, if, if they are in diapers, like for example, Sarah, just lean her over my leg, pull her diaper down, and just sort of hold her as best I can, and then give her a spanking. Sometimes at Sarah's age, I find at around the one and a half to three range, is where they start realizing they're getting a spanking and they think they can get out of it. Because before, like w when they're younger th than one and a half, they just take it because they don't really know what's going on. Like they, they, they sort of like, they know they're, they're naughty, but they don't know that they can fight mom and dad. So they just sort of, you'll, you'll pick them up and lean them over and they just, they just take it. But when they get to like Sarah's age, Sarah's at the age where she's not old enough to really keep her composure like Simon is. So she just like starts really flailing. So you gotta like sort of like keep her under control, sort of hold her down, hold her legs. Sometimes mom needs to get involved to just like keep her there and then just like give her a few quick ones on the butt and then, and then it's over. We hug, you know, we, she says sorry and then it's over. So you don't have to take the whole diaper off, just pull it down and pull it back up. Um, and there's a reason why it's best to spank on the butt just because the butt is really padded and the butt's really resilient, right? Really resilient to bruising, and it's far away from bone and from, and from muscle and things like that. So definitely best to spank on the butt. I realize it's not always um, practical, but um, if you're at home, it's the best thing to do in my opinion. Now, I have found, the reason why I've brought this in is because I just wanted to show you the two instruments that we use. So I have found, and I wrote a blog post on it, but I have found that this instrument, it was actually a, a friend of ours that actually bought this for us. So we've been using different instruments throughout the times, you know, long spoons, short spoons. I've, I've tried the belt, um, things like that. But I have found that this is, this is the best instrument for many reasons. Number one is, is it's cheap. So this is just a shoehorn that you buy from Ikea. So normally it's that thing that you put in your shoe and you put your foot in. So this shoehorn only costs $2 from Ikea. So you can buy like tons of them. Like I buy like, like, I've got like 10 of them in the house and they're just like all over the place. So there's like one in the kitchen, there's one in the bathroom, there's one in the bedroom. Just because we want to just be able to spank anywhere and have like a spanking instrument at like arm's length, you know? So it's just there. I don't need to like go over into the room and get it. So if you've been to my house, you'll see some hanging on the fridge. There's a couple in the toilet. There's one in our room. Um, they're all over the place. Uh, and here, there's one in that bathroom. So this one I've taken from the back bathroom, and there's also one in the storeroom next door. So for the parents here, you can use those if you need to. So number one, it's cheap. Number one, it's light. Because some people, they use like maybe a metal rod or something like that, but you want whatever you're spanking with to be light because the, obviously the more mass it has, the more blunt force trauma it's gonna create. But I'm not trying to create blunt force trauma. I'm trying to create a, a light slap that stings. It may leave a red mark, but you know, you want more slap and uh, less force. Another thing is it's really long. So sometimes with mom, see like me, I, I played badminton when I was younger. So like I've got a really good sort of like wrist flick, but like my mom, my, my mom, my wife, 
My wife though, like, you know, she doesn't have that same wrist skill. So like, you know, I could slap with the same amount of force with this, but my wife can't get as much force out of this as she can with this, because this, you know, if you know anything about physics, the, the longer your lever is, you know, the further your fulcrum is from the point of force, the more slap you're going to get. So this is nice and long. So you can actually create quite a big slap, even if you're not very strong, if you're a smaller lady. Um, so more slap, less swing. It's plastic. So I like the fact that it's plastic because it doesn't crack as easily as wood. Now we have gone through tons of these. And, and you, 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 you know, you hear about People say, oh, you know, you spank them so hard that, that they actually break. You don't really have to spank them that hard for these to break because eventually you keep spanking them. Just the, the force and the vibration eventually cracks these. And we've gone through so many spoons and so many like spatulas that we don't actually buy these anymore. So, you know, we've, we've bought a handful of these and we've maybe broken like two of them. But they broke because, you know, maybe Elizabeth accidentally because I said she's not as accurate with it as I am. So she might have like hit the wall by accident and then the, 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 the edge snaps, snaps off. But then we just use that because like one of the disadvantages is, is that it's really long. So if, if you are say in, in a tight space, like say you're at the shops, you need to spank your kids in the car. I keep this one in the car just because it's shorter because when I've got them over my, over my knee inside the car, I've got less space. So you know, but the car ends up help, helping me to like constrain them because they can't kick and flail as much because the doors are there. But then I can use this, it's a bit shorter to sort of spank them right there. Whereas this one, it's a bit harder to spank right there. You know, you need to sort of hold it here. So we use the shorter ones in those scenarios where a shorter one is a bit easier to use. Uh, so it doesn't crack as much. So you, I find that when you use these to spank, You'll buy a couple of them. They're so cheap anyways, you just buy it, but then you probably won't need to replace them for a while. Um, so they're not destructible. We keep a wooden wok spatula for less spacious areas like the car. Uh, and I'll put a link to the blog post so you can read that as well um, when you look at these sermons. So that's, these are the things I use. I think this costs around three bucks from Coles. And again, you'll see that they're flat. So try and buy things, you know, in, instead of using something that is round and hard, the reason why I use things that are flat is because it creates more slap, you know, more slap and less force. That's why I really like this. This seems to um, uh, give all the attributes that are necessary for a spanking tool uh, and, and, and overcome all the shortcomings of the traditional tool. So that's what we use. Now let's go on. So Hebrews 12, what am I doing for time? <sighs> I'll cover, I'll cover one more point and then I'll do the last point uh, next sermon. Let's go back to Hebrews 12, verse 11. It says here, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So the part on this point I just want to focus on is where it says no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Now, we talked about, you know, inflicting pain, obviously, on a child, because that's the idea. You know, spankings should hurt. If a spanking doesn't hurt, then you're not spanking your child. So spankings should hurt. So you ought to spank yourself with the instruments to, to get an idea of how painful it is. It needs to be painful. Otherwise, it's not going to, to do the job. Um, look at Proverbs 19. Verse 18 says here, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Now this is why, you know, on Father's Day, I'm just to remind you guys again, this is why it's important for fathers to be involved in the spanking of their children. Why? Because mothers, they're more emotional, they, they, they are more driven by their emotion. So when children are crying and playing up, they can manipulate mom a lot more easy a lot easier than manipulating dad dad it's like it's almost like god has wired us dads to see through the tears and it's like i can see through the tears your tears don't fool me you're getting a spanking boy <laughs> you know so you know this is why it's so important that fathers are involved because we will hold to this proverb we will not let our soul spare for his crying but mothers may you know, mothers sometimes will ease off 
go on a bit easier. So man, you gotta step up, be manly about it. You need to make decisions based on what is right and wrong. If they have disobeyed you and you have a punishment, make sure it is carried out. And if mom's not willing to carry it out, you carry it out and later pull mom aside and say, hey, you've got to do this as well. Otherwise, you will just make your job harder. So spanking should hurt. There should be crying. Let not thy soul spare for his crying. If a child is getting spanked and there's no crying, and they're a young child, obviously older children, they just take it. Maybe they don't want to give you the pleasure of you seeing them cry. But younger children, they will cry if they get spanked properly. Right? And I'm not talking about a whiny crying. You know, like you spank them and they're just still like complaining and whining. It's a different kind of cry when it's a painful cry. You know, they, they are actually crying because of the pain, not crying because you've just disciplined them. So they should, they ought to be crying and definitely not laughing. You know, like if your children are laughing after they get spanked, you haven't spanked them. All right. So they, they should be crying. If they're laughing, you're doing it wrong. All right, you're definitely doing it wrong. Just, that's a red flag for you. Cr crying is good, laughing, not good. Um, now, some, some, people, some people choose to muffle the screams. You know, so I've heard of people using tech techniques where you might muffle your child's mouth or you might um, put them in a pillow. I know somebody told me once that, like, you'll put them over the bed over, in a pillow and sort of muffle their screams. I, I personally don't. Like, to me... I guess the reason why people might want to muffle the screams is because they're worried about what other people think. But just so, sort of going on that point at the beginning, I, I, know, I know why people do it and it's understandable. To me, I just don't because, because really I don't care what the neighbours think. Do you know what I mean? Like if the neighbours hear my kid getting spanked, like so be it. You know, then they know this is, a, this is a household that spanks their children. And if they call the police, I'm just going to have to have another round of education for them. But, you know, so, you know, I don't, I don't really care if, if they hear it um, because they, they will scream. I mean, it's not necessarily a joyful experience when you spank your kids. For those of you who are, have, have spanked your kids or who have never spanked your kids, you know the reason why people don't tend to do it is because it's not necessarily a pleasant experience. Like your children crying and flailing and, you know, and shouting and things like that. So, but you have to do it anyway. You know, this is why it, it takes faith and it takes love to spank your children because the natural man doesn't want to do it. The natural man wants to put it off and say, oh, the kid wasn't that, that, that bad. They don't really need to be spanked. They're not that naughty. That's what the natural man says. You know, the natural man is scared of other people knowing that you spank, whereas a spiritual man will stand boldly and know, hey, I'm not, I'm not scared of what, uh, if people hear that my kids are getting spanked. Um, and I think the more people hear spankings, the more common it will be. Um, the less taboo it'll be uh, if people just know, hey, that's what we do. Uh, that's what we do, we spank our kids. Um, uh, two last questions, um, and I'll cover the last bit. Oh, actually, I might be able to actually finish it. I'm going through it pretty quick. So, at what age should you start spanking? This is a question that people ask. They'll say, what age should you start spanking your child? You know, I don't think it needs to be necessarily a line in the sand, but I think it takes wisdom as a parent. You should start spanking them when they start understanding what you're telling them. Like there comes a point in time, and it comes very early. This is not like five, six years old. It may be like one year old, one and a half year old, you know, we find it's about the one to one and a half year old age where you tell them something and they understand. And sometimes it'll be as obvious as, you know, let's say this is something they're not meant to play with and you're like, Sarah, don't touch that. And they're just like, they're looking at you and they're just like, that, that obviously they know that they're not meant to touch it and they're seeing how you're going to react. Or like, don't touch it. And they're just like, you know, like, what are you going to do? That, that's when you know, like you know that they've understood you, you got to take action. You know, I'm not saying that you necessarily spank a five-year-old like you spank a one and a half-year-old, but that's when you start spanking. When they start having that knowledge of right and wrong, you start implementing the rod. So uh, when they start to understand, so it, it, I, I think it should be intentional rebellion uh, when they start doing things on purpose. Uh, let's go to, back to Proverbs 13. <coughs> he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. So this is early on. Um, that's what betimes mean. 
So that's the question of when you should start spanking. What about at what age do you stop spanking? Now, let's just go back to Proverbs 19. Because I know I've heard teaching on this that you never stop at any point. Um, but look at what it says here. It says, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Now, it's interesting there that Proverbs 19, 18 says, Spank them while there is hope. So it, to me, you can spank up to whatever age, but this verse seems to imply to me that there is an age where it's no longer effective. You know, that spanking is not the most effective way. You know, spanking is really effective for young children, but I think when you start reaching the older children, the teenage years, you know, it's like th that's not going to be as effective as taking away the Wi-Fi, for example, or not letting them go to that party. Because, you know, a punishment is only a pu like a punishment if the, if the person wants what you're about to take from them. And when you're at an older age and you're like, you know what, I'll take these five spankings and I'll just take them and it's not going to do it. To me, that's not going to be effective anymore. When a child knows he can just take the pain, but he still gets to go to the party, he still gets to do whatever, because at that age, their value system has now changed. And this is why the Bible says, chasten them be times, chasten them early, set the standard early, chasten thy son while there is hope, because there will be a time when there is no longer hope to chasten them and you need to go about it. Now you need to reason with them and actually convince them what they're doing is wrong. So there will come a time when spankings will no longer have any effect. Start as soon as possible before it's too late. Um, because this, uh, this point, you know, the above point uh, implies that there will be an age where it won't be effective anymore. So I don't know whether you're necessarily going to be spanking a 21 year old you know, who's still in your house. To me, you know, I think you're already past the chastening phase. You're now on to the reasoning with an adult phase. Um, now, the last thing, uh, we'll cover this quickly because it's just a quick point. Let's go back to Hebrews 12, 7. Uh, sorry, verse 11. It says here, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness, unto them which are exercised thereby. See, so afterward, it's going to yield some fruit. So if you are spanking the right way, if you claim that you are spanking your child and you're just seeing no change in behavior, you need to reflect on how you're spanking your child. Are you being consistent? Are you doing it early enough? Are you doing it often enough? Are you spanking them with a high enough standard? Uh, are you spanking them the right way? Are you spanking them on the skin? Does it hurt? Um, you know, those sorts of things. Because if it doesn't result in a change of behavior, you're not doing it right. Because the Bible says here, if you chasten your son, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So spanking should result in a change of behavior. And obviously the more consistent you are, uh, the more effective it's going to be. Uh, now here's something. Now you're not just correcting actions when you correct your child. You're also correcting attitude, okay? So you're not just correcting actions, you're correcting attitude. Let me give you an example, right? Let's say you're, you, you've asked your child to do something and they don't do it, you know, maybe to pick up the toys. That's, that's always, that'll be, trust me, you'll, be, you'll ask your kid to pick up the, this is like the example that probably everyone's familiar with because they will play with their toys, you ask them to pick up their toys, they don't pick up their toys. So let's say you've asked them to pick up their toys and then they don't pick up their toys. So you've asked them once, you're standing as well, I'm going to give you a spanking because I've asked you to pick up your toys, you didn't pick up the toys. So you give them the spanking, but now they go pick up their toys and they're like, oh, they're spanking, now they go pick up their toys and they go and they pick up their toys and they throw them. Now that is not acceptable, right? Because it's not just getting them to do the job, it's getting them to do the job with the right attitude. So you know what I mean? Like you're not correcting just their actions, you're correcting their attitude. It's sort of like when you ask them, say sorry, and they're like, sorry. No, no, because they need to say sorry in the right way as well. So obviously, you know, you can't change, you know, you can't force a person's heart to change. But when they're children, that, that's how you do it. You, you, know, you give them direction, you tell them how to do it, and then you give them the understanding as they grow up. And then hopefully their heart and actions start to line up as you instruct them uh, on why it's right and wrong. So you're not just correcting actions, you're also correcting attitude. They may be doing what you ask, but they should be doing it with the right attitude. It's the same after they get a spanking. You know, you spank them. It's not acceptable to just like mouth back off at you. 
You know, like they get a spanking, they're throwing a tantrum on the floor because they're angry, right? They're angry that they just got a spanking. So they might be angry, you know, maybe a kid will push you back and they'll say like, they'll be screaming at you. This is not acceptable. So you spank them and they need to also respond in an acceptable way. Hey, it's okay to cry. Obviously crying is okay. You know, they can cry and they can whimper, whatever, but they can't throw a tantrum. They can't scream. You need to set the standard to say, you can cry, but you can't tantrum. So you're still correcting the behavior, but also correcting the attitude. Uh, Proverbs 23, this will be the last passage I go to. It's back here. <coughs> it says here, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Now I think it's important that God put this in here to, to remind us, hey, when you beat them with the rod, they're not going to die. Because for those of you who are going to be new parents, it'll, it'll sound like they're dying. You know, and don't be fooled by the crying. Don't be fooled by the screams because children tend to overreact. You know, when they're really happy, they're really happy. When they're really sad, it's just like the world is come crashing down. And when mom and dad is spanking them, it's just like, it'll sound like torture because they think they're getting tortured, right? They, it'll just sound like they're dying. And this is why when people hear spanking, it's, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant to hear it, right? Because that's how children carry on. Um, but look at this. I'm just tying it into this point of um, afterward it's going to yield this peaceable fruit of righteousness. Because it says here, Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. So it's interesting here that there's this connection between somebody being saved and getting spanked. You know, because it teaches them, hey, there is punishment, there is correction for action and it's going to be a physical punishment. Hell is a physical punishment for our sin and you know spanking is a milder form of this to teach them this truth. So it's interesting that there's this connection between spanking being saved. Um, it teaches a child that sin has consequences. You know the wages of sin is death. So you know this ought to motivate you to do it. You know if you know that there's a connection between spanking your child and them being saved. If, hey, if you love your children, number one, if you don't spank them, you hate them. But this is another reason to love them even more because you know that if you spank them, you're teaching them the right principles. And the Bible says here, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Hey, that's something to motivate you to get out there and make sure you are spanking your children right. Now, next week, I'm going to go into the alternatives and just explain to you why spanking is so much more effective than these other alternatives and just some of the craziness that you read on the internet of what the alternatives are. But I'll save that for next week. All right, let's pray. All right, dear Lord, thank you for your word. Um, thank you for the guidance that you give us. Thank you that your ways are always best. Lord, give us the faith and the boldness and the love to implement this in our families uh, Lord, help us not to let our soul spare for their crying. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us, give us wisdom as we raise our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We love you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.